Good morning. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, for the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Let us worship God. Welcome to this time of worship on the Lord's Day. It is Good to have all of you here today. Please take time to sign the friendship pad and to share it with one another and greet each other in the name of Christ. What a wonderful day, as you can see in front of us, uh, having Carol and the men sing for us today, <laughs> sing for God. Um, started out as a men's group, and then Carol has stepped in. Um, so we're really glad to have this group that has come together and will be leading worship with us today. Please take time to look at announcements in your bulletin. There's information about the members of this group and about how it came to be formed. Some information about our summer reading program. And I would like to call on Pat Barrow for a minute for mission about our reading program. Good morning. We are a third th finished through our uh, summer reading program. We're averaging about 20 students a day, and it's going very well, thanks to, the, to Susan and the volunteers. And I won't call out every volunteer of this church because I might leave out somebody, but thank you. Um, and it is going well, and continue to pray for this ministry. Thank you.
Good morning. morning. Please join me in the opening sentences, which can be found in your bulletin. Holy are you, O God of grace and mercy. May all the nations praise you, O God. May all the nations of the earth joyfully sing, because God's justice is supreme. May the love that lights up the face of God shine with favor upon us and bless us. Teach us God's way of living and loving, so that we may witness to that love and grace. We gather to worship our wise and holy God. We are in awe and revere you for your saving works. Our first hymn today is hymn number 327, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. If the Lord should mark iniquities, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with God so that he may be revered. Let us say with the psalmist, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman waits for the morning. So let us confess our sin before God and one another. I invite you to join me in our unison prayer of confession and our responsive assurance of pardon. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess to you now that we have sinned. We confess the sins that no one knows and the sins that everyone knows. We confess the sins that are a burden to us and the sins that do not bother us because we have grown used to them. We confess our sins as a church. We have not loved one another as Christ loved us. We have not forgiven one another as we have been forgiven. We have not given ourselves in love and service for the world as Christ gave himself for us. Father, forgive us, send the Holy Spirit to us 
that he may give us power to live by your mercy as you have called us to live through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Let us sing God's praises for his mercy in our lives. invite the children to join Miss Carol Steen on the steps for the children's sermon. time ago, a really long time ago, when I was a little girl, <laughs> my father would take me with him when he would go to singing practice. Sometimes I would sit and listen to the singing practice, and sometimes my father would have me sit with him. He'd show me how to read the music. He'd show me how to sing a part when the, when the conductor showed us to come in. He, and he taught me a love for music, singing in a group. The favorite group that I loved to listen to my father sing in was a group of all men except for <coughs> one woman. <laughs> well, God had a lot of plans for my singing, and I've had a wonderful singing time in my life. I've been in girl groups, girl and boy groups, <coughs> all women groups, men and women groups, little groups, big groups. I've traveled to many, many countries to sing, not by myself, but with groups. And I've sung with great big orchestras. It's just been a wonderful thing. God had some wonderful plans for my life. And then God sent me to Wallace, North Carolina, where I get to sing in the Wallace, North Carolina Presbyterian Church Choir with Miss Carla and Miss Vera and all the wonderful people who sing with us there. But God said, I have a surprise for you, Miss Carol. And what do you suppose that surprise is at, when I'm an old lady? What did I get to do this morning? I got to sing with, as the only woman in an all men's choir. And this is a thrill. So I'd like to have us have a little prayer before you hear our next song, okay? Our Father, we thank you for parents, grandparents, and adults who share their love for something with children. And I thank you for surprises that come even at an older age. We thank you that you have a plan for our lives, dear God, and we thank you for taking care of us and sending us your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm gonna ride out. 
Cause I'm ready to go. I'm going to ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm going to ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. Are you ready, my sister? prayer for illumination as we get ready to read and hear and listen for God's Word. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us. Open our eyes and hearts so that we may behold wondrous things out of your Word. Through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Our New Testament lesson for today is Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. That can be found in your Pew Bibles on page 997. And I will be reading, and I always have to look at this, from the English Standard Version. After this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Cornelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass, like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front 
and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Our next hymn is, In Christ There Is No East or West. Please be seated. I invite you to listen for the Word of God from the Old Testament, two different Psalms, number 67, number 117. Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make His face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. At two o'clock on Thursday afternoon, January 19th, 2006, an Atlas V rocket blasted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The rocket launch sent a 1,000-pound spacecraft the size of a baby grand piano into space. Since that afternoon, the spacecraft has been traveling at the speed of 36,000 miles per hour. This past Tuesday at around 7.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the New Horizons spacecraft finally reached its designation or destination as it made the closest approach in human history to the dwarf planet Pluto, passing by at a distance of about 7,700 miles. I want you to think about that for a minute. New Horizons has flown for almost 3,500 days, about 83,000 hours, at 36,000 miles per hour, for a total distance of about 3 billion miles, and it has just now reached the limits of our solar system. Early last week, a friend posted a picture on Facebook from the Banner Creek Observatory and Science Center in Holton, Kansas. The picture was from the observatory's collection of serious wonder photos. The picture was taken from the Curiosity rover on the surface of the planet Mars. In the foreground, you see the, the rich red surface of the planet. The sky is a mix of orange and gray. And in the center of the picture up in the sky are three little white dots almost in a line. Compared to the horizon and the landscape and the sky, the white dots are almost barely larger than a pinprick. And the bottom white dot has an arrow pointing to it along with the words, you are here. And the caption says, this is a picture from the Curiosity rover on Mars showing Earth from the perspective of Mars. You are literally looking at your home from the perspective of another planet. And the comment from the folks at the observatory says, imagine all the drama and conflict contained on that tiny dot. The psalmist writes, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? If we were to rewrite that psalm, we might say something like, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at pictures from Pluto three billion miles away or see the tiny dot that is earth as viewed from Mars, what are human beings that you are mindful of us, mortals that you care for us? But the psalmist continues, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. So let's bring it back down to earth for a few minutes. Some of you heard some of these thoughts last Sunday morning in the opening assembly. Since Nancy and I returned from our trip to Seoul, South Korea, many people have asked, did you have a good time? How was the flight? Well, let me put it this way. At times between Detroit and Seoul, I felt like we were flying on new horizons, not because of the speed of the plane, but because it felt like it was taking nine and a half years to get there. We didn't come anywhere close to flying three billion miles, but the 6,600 miles from Detroit to Seoul was plenty far. And let me tell you about a different perspective. We arrived at Incheon Airport at about 6 p.m. on Friday night. And Incheon is a huge, ultra-modern airport. 
Fortunately, we didn't have any trouble navigating through immigration and customs and retrieving our luggage. Natalie met us for a tearful and happy reunion, and then we bought tickets for the high-speed train from the airport to downtown Seoul. The trip took about an hour on the train. When we got off the train, we made our way to the subway station, bought tickets and rode the car to the stop near our hotel in the Myeongdong area of Seoul. And when we climbed up from the steps from the subway and walked out onto the streets of downtown Seoul on Friday night, we realized we weren't in Duplin County anymore. <laughs> Seoul is a modern city of 10 million people. And we stayed in the center of Seoul, just a few blocks from the historical heart of the city. It's also the hotel was located in the center of Seoul's business and shopping districts, just a few blocks from City Hall and from the U.S. Embassy. And when we came up from that subway tunnel, there was a lot of traffic. There were plenty of lights, many skyscrapers, and people everywhere who were heading home from work or heading out for their Friday night. And during the following week, we saw some interesting sights. We toured some palaces dating from the 14th century that are located right in the middle of modern-day Seoul. We rode a bus about 35 or 40 minutes and went to the Olympic Park from the 1988 Seoul Olympic Summer Games. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, Natalie, but we visited the beautiful Cheongyanchan Stream. Apparently, I didn't pronounce it right. <laughs> and we walked on the river walk right in the middle of the city, a beautiful place where people were relaxing and strolling by a restored green area. On a Sunday afternoon, we went to a lovely lake and park where many, many people were enjoying a Sunday afternoon bike ride or picnic or a walk or playing board games. I've told many people about this. I noticed a group of Korean schoolgirls. I don't know if they were elementary or early middle school. Four of them, and they kept looking at us and giggling and looking at us and kind of working their way over toward, toward us. And then one of them, they came up and stood in front of us, and one, one of them asked in very good English if she could interview us for a school project. And we said yes. And she asked Nancy, why are you here today? And Nancy told her we had come to Seoul to pick up our daughter who had been studying at the university for a year. The girl asked, do you like it? And after we said yes, the interview was over. <laughs> and they ran off giggling. We toured Yonsei University where Natalie studied for a year, a school with almost 39,000 students and 4,500 faculty members a university that has its roots in the Chosun Christian College. It was founded by a Presbyterian missionary named Horace Underwood in 1915 and also has its roots in the Severance Union Medical College. It was also founded by another Presbyterian missionary named Horace Newton Allen. And the two schools united in 1957 to form Yonsei University, which along with Seoul National University and Korea University are the three Sky, Seoul National Korea Yonsei Universities. And as I've told other people, one of the most interesting parts of the trip to me was simply being in Seoul, a city of 10 million people. No one knew who I was except Nancy and Natalie, and that was kind of nice. And I mean it this way, not the way you just took it. I want to explain what I mean by that comment. When I travel, I like to people watch, especially in airports. I like to think about the lives and stories of the people that I see. And when I'm in an airport, I imagine where and why the people are traveling. I think about their hopes and their joys, their sorrows, their dreams, their family histories, and so forth. I don't know them. They don't know me. But everyone has a story. And the experience was heightened by being in a different country. To our surprise, we saw very few foreigners in Seoul, very few. And I expected to see many more in the capital city. And when we stepped onto a subway car full of people, we were almost always the only Caucasian or Western people on the train. 
there were so many, many people going about their business on the subway cars and riding on buses and walking on the streets, going to and from work, to and from school, to and from shopping areas. And we visited many traditional shopping areas with countless stalls offering numerous goods for sale. And sometimes it was almost a sensory overload, but it was fabulous. And I could go on and on, but this is my point. When I have that kind of experience, and I'm glad I do, when I have that kind of experience, it is humbling and helpful. It is humbling and helpful because it yanks me out of the little cocoon of a world that I tend to wrap myself in. And I kind of liken it to a paraphrase of the quote from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look around at a huge sprawling city filled with millions of people halfway around the world, what am I that you are mindful of me, that you care for me? And I don't say that in a pessimistic way. I don't say that in a self-pitying way. On the contrary, I say it with a sense of awe and wonder, much as the psalmist says, praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Every month, I talk with my good friend, Larry Williams, Larry is a retired Baptist minister who lives in Lewisburg. Once a month, or one month, I drive to Lewisburg. The next month, I call Larry on the phone. Larry began the Pastor as Spiritual Guide program a number of years ago and was its director until he retired just a couple years ago. As a part of that program, we were encouraged to meet with a spiritual director on a regular basis. And I meet with Larry once a month, and it's been a great blessing to meet with Larry regularly to pray together and to talk about how God is at work in my life and in my ministry. And on a regular basis, Larry asks me the question that is on the signature line of my emails. Where is God already at work in this situation? Larry and I talked in Lewisburg about 10 days ago. He wanted to hear about our trip to Seoul. I shared a number of experiences and stories with him, just like I have with you. And then Larry asked, Phil, where was God already at work in that situation? I could have named any number of experiences, but I had to talk about being in the midst of all those people halfway around the world and thinking about how great God is. On Tuesday, December 24th, 1968, astronauts Bill Anders, Jim Lovell, and Frank Borman orbited the moon. In a live TV broadcast on Christmas Eve, which at the time was the most watched TV broadcast, the astronauts sent this message back to the Earth. We are now approaching lunar sunrise, and for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth, and the Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And so it was. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, 
good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. According to the United States Census Bureau, the current world population is approximately seven and one quarter billion people. If you want to find something interesting to look at, go to the U.S. world population clock on the U.S. Census Bureau and try to keep up with the number that updates the world population. I cannot give you an accurate up to the minute, up to the second estimate of the world population because it's moving so quickly. Let's just say the world's population is seven billion people. And guess what? Most of them don't know me. (laughs) And I don't know almost all of them. But the scriptures teach us that all seven billion plus people on this earth are created in God's image. And that's a humbling thought that can give you a different perspective. We serve a great God Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let us pray. O God, our God, you are sovereign over all the earth and Lord of our lives. Help us to trust that you hold our world and its peoples and our very lives securely in your hands. You are the God to whom we have given our lives. You are the God who deserves our worship our praise, and our joyful obedience. Amen. like to share some prayer concerns with you and a joy. Um, Let us pray for John Ward Ferrier, Nate and George's little boy. He will be having an, an MRI tomorrow morning to check on some facial nerve loss to see if they can determine what's causing that. Um, Let us pray for Ed Rector. This is Lydia Woodard's father. Uh, Mr. Rector had a stroke last Sunday and he's at Uh, the rehab facility up in Kenansville. Let's continue to pray for Ben Rodwell and his family. Ben is 13 years old. He and his brother were in an automobile accident up in Littleton, North Carolina, about 10 days ago, and his older brother was killed in the accident. But uh, updates from Sharon Robinson that um, Ben's making progress um, and that the family very much appreciates our prayers. I'd like to ask you to pray for my cousins, for my mother, for my family. My aunt, Lorraine Gilbert, we call her Aunt Peggy, um, died in Vermont on Wednesday of this week. Uh, She was my father's uh, only sister. And the service will be sometime later in August or September when all the family can gather. And also a joy, a wonderful joy, uh, had the joy of uh, officiating at the wedding of Ellie Wells, and Michael Newton on Friday night in Athens, Georgia, in an absolutely beautiful setting. And we pray for God's blessing on this couple. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for pictures from Pluto that are awesome, inspiring, hard to believe, humbling, We thank you for the the creativity and knowledge that you have given people to design a spaceship that can fly so far and send us pictures of this creation that you created and that you sustain. It boggles our mind how big things are. And then to know that you created it and sustain it. You are worthy of all of our praise and adoration and awe. But it boggles our mind that you know us by name and that you care for each one of us so much 
that you would send your son to be like us, to live for us, and most of all, to die for us. It's wondrous love that you have given us in Jesus Christ. You deserve our praise, our adoration, our awe, our love, our worship, our obedience, our steadfastness, our loyalty. Lord, help us to be your people and to live as you have called us to live. Lord, in this great world in which we live, in which there are so many people, we call out some by name today because we know that they have need of you. Lord, we pray for John Ward, and we pray for Georgia and Nate and for John Ward's family in this time of concern. We pray for his doctors tomorrow as he has this MRI, and we pray that it will show no great problems and that he will be fine. And Lord, we pray for Ben Rodwell, for his parents. We thank you that he is making some slow progress from this accident. We pray for this young man in his physical pain and in his sorrow for his brother. We pray for his parents as they take care of him in their own time of grief. Lord, be with this family and their community. Lord, we lift up Mr. Rector today. We lift up his wife, Delane, and we pray for Lydia and Lee and all of the rectors. We pray that he can be made strong in his body and recover from this stroke. And Lord, I pray for Ken and Holly and Peter and Ann and their families. Thank you for the life of Aunt Peggy. I pray for them and for my family and as we mourn the death of Aunt Peggy. But we give thanks that she is with you. And Lord, we celebrate with Ellie and Michael and their families. What a joyous event. We ask your blessings on this couple as they begin their life together. Lord, be with them and keep them safe. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of this life, for calling us into your church, to be a part of your church. We pray that we might serve you and that what we do might bear witness to your greatness and your goodness and your love in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the families of the Marines who were killed in Chattanooga this week. We pray for their communities. We thank you for their service to this country. And we lift up our leaders who are making very difficult decisions and who are charged with keeping us safe. And we pray that we might work together as a country to be strong and to stand for liberty and freedom in all that we do. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ as we give thanks to you through him and as we pray together the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings.
Gracious and loving God, we walk by faith, we live by faith, we give by faith. God of great gifts, you have given us so much in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, accept these gifts from our hands. Let them be our faithful response to your abundant grace in Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in affirming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 341. God be merciful to us and bless us. Make God smile with kindness upon us that his ways may be known upon the earth and his saving power be known among people everywhere. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen.
。